How many people brought your Bibles? Let me see. I don't want to see your hand. I want to see your Bible. Hold all the Bibles up here. Praise God. Hold them up for a minute. I want to look at them. Blue ones, bright blue ones. Praise God. Red ones and burgundy ones and black ones and white ones. I got some with no covers. Hallelujah. Those are the ones working. Praise God. You can put your hand down now. How many people believe that book you just lifted up? Hold your other hand up if you believe that. Well, wave it to the Lord. He might come right now. How many of y'all would like to go to heaven right now? Yes, indeed. Praise God. Well, all we got to do is pray in Jesus. Allah will suck us off this planet pretty soon. God's going to minister life. Turn with me tonight to the book of Genesis. Everybody say Genesis. Genesis. That's the first book of the Bible. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 32. We're going to some very familiar scripture. Jesus wants to minister in this wise tonight, and I believe the Spirit of God is going to gloriously minister tonight. Now, if I talk too fast, by the tape, you can tune me down. <laughs> uh, hallelujah, and I'm a Frenchman from South Louisiana, and bless God, most of you people ought to understand me. Praise God. And if you don't ask God for the gift of interpretation, he'll help you. Praise the name of Jesus. Genesis chapter 32. The title of my sermon tonight is Pressing for a Blessing. Pressing for the Blessing. How many people want to be blessed tonight? You've been blessed already by living praise, but praise God. Now the El Shaddai God is going to touch you tonight. Cancer cannot stand in the power of the Holy Ghost when you know how to release the Zoe life of God out of your innermost being. There are a lot of people speaking in tongues that ain't got a lick of power. I mean, can't get a headache, heal, can't get a nose from stop running. But brother, what you need to understand is how to release the Zoe life of God into your innermost being so you can effect a cure in your body spiritually physically, financially, in any facet of your life. Genesis chapter 32, we're going to talk about a boy named Jacob. That's his, it, it, that means rascal. He was a boy that wasn't too close to God at times, and yet at times he was very close to God. Title of the sermon tonight is Pressing for a Blessing. Genesis chapter 32, here Jacob has messed up, messed up. I mean, when I say messed up, he's ripped off his brother, and his brother's half mad at him. And his brother's name Esau. Now, when you got a brother named Esau, I mean, you know, that's kind of a tough name to start with. I mean, my God, he's been running for 20 years from this boy because he stole the birthright from his brother Esau through trickery, through all kinds of, uh, in other words, through deceit. But to make a long story short, he's now getting close to where he's going to come face to face with Esau. And he's scared. He has fear in his life because he's not under the New Testament covenant as we are. I mean, my God, he was, in other words, the Holy Spirit rested upon him. The Holy Spirit is inside of you. There's quite a difference there. You understand what I'm saying? So in other words, Jesus said he hadn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now at that time, Jacob didn't have that inner Zoe life, Holy Ghost, as we know it today. In other words, the reality of redemption had not yet come into existence as we know it today because Jesus had not yet died, resurrected, ascended, and sat down. You got that? Hallelujah. Praise God. Gave you the whole book right there in a few verses. Genesis chapter 32. Let's start reading. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's go start. Let's, let's just read up a little bit. Let's start with verse 21. So when the so when the present over before him himself lodged that night in the company and he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two woman servants and his eleven sons and passed over the ford Jabbok and he took them and sent them over the brook and sent them over that he had and Jacob was left alone how many of you people you've been left alone before you, and then you understand what this boy is talking about. He's left alone. He's by himself now. And all of a sudden, he begins to minister to God. Let's read verse 24 again. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. He's wrestling literally with an angel of the Lord. Some people said it was God himself, but we'll call it, bless God, the Bible said it was a man from the Lord or whatever. He is wrestling and he's fighting so hard to hold this angel because see, it's now getting daybreak and the angel's trying to tell the boy, turn me loose, Jacob. You got to turn me loose. I got to go back to the father. And he said, you ain't going nowhere. Don't that sound? like a Cajun? You ever had a Cajun grab you? You got to knock him out to get his hand off of you. 
I want you to think about that for a minute. Keep reading with me. Verse 25 again. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day break up. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. In other words, look here, brother. I'll put it in our everyday vernacular. I'll paraphrase it. Up your nose with a rubber hose. You ain't going nowhere until you put the blessing on me. You ever got that dedicated in your prayer life to God? How don't you think about that? Read that with me again. Verse 26, and he said, Let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? Notice that. What is thy name? And he said, Jacob, which means rascal. A guy that's deceivious. And he, verse 28, and he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God, and with men hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore it is that thou ask after thine my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Penal, for, God, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. And as he passed over Penal, the sun rose up upon him, and and he halted upon his thigh. Therefore the children of Israel eat not of the sinew which shrank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh, thigh until this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh in the sinew that shrank. And I want to go back to verse 26. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. The title of the sermon this, tonight is Pressing for a Blessing. Have you ever pressed for a blessing that hard as Jacob did? When your back is up against the wall and you done deceived everybody like this boy had done and his brother's coming to see him and it's been 20 years, he knows, bless God, if God doesn't intervene in his life, Esau will knock his brains out and kill him. He knows that without a shadow of a doubt because the last time Esau saw him, he was a thief. But this time Esau was going to see a prince of God. He said, your name will no longer be Jacob, which means rascal. Your name will be Israel, which means prince of God. So to become a prince of God, you've got to press for the Lord to bless thee. In other words, you've got to call upon God day and night, night and day, constantly, all the time. Pressing in, uh, Paul said it, I press for the mark of the prize of the high calling. Now, some people, some people, you know, they hadn't been sent, they just went. You know what I'm saying? They really hadn't been called to the gospel, but they heard they had a job open somewhere, so they went and get it messed up the whole town. I know some preachers like that. They're a name call to the gospel of Jesus Christ. They don't have a pastor's heart. They have no compassion for nobody. All they're looking for is a dollar bill. But when a man is called to the very Shekinah presence of the glory of God, when a woman is called in that magnitude, brother, and when she's got a calling or he has a calling before him, it'll become a high calling and nothing will stop that man from reaching what God wants him to do. Nothing in the world can stop a man because God said we're more than conquerors if God be for us who can be against us. Now many people quote that but they don't want to believe that in the man in the moon. They say, bless God, I'm more than a conqueror. And the next week, brother, they beat down, despondent, and destroyed. What happened to more than a conqueror? Well, I don't know what happened. I don't know when the devil come against me, man, knock me down. Well, Jesus said you're more than a conqueror. Well, I know that's what he said, but see, we got all these ands, ists, and so-sos, but Jesus said be steadfast and movable, abound in the work of the Lord, for you know that your labor is not in vain and God. When I went in this ministry five years ago, I made up my mind, brother, that every demon and devil of hell would know me by my first name, and I'm not trying to lift myself up, but I made up my mind, bless God, that I'm going to do something for Jesus, whether the devil likes it or not, that I would press for the blessing of the high call of God in Christ Jesus. I'm not satisfied with second best. Bless God, I want the whole world. Jesus said, go to the world and compel them to come in. And the only way they're going to come in, if they see a live Jesus inside of you. My Jesus ain't dead, he's alive. Do you understand what I'm saying? Pressing for the blessing. So point one of this sermon is, pray 
Perseverance is the key to receive all the things God has for you through prayer. If you're not a person that ought to persevere in the power of the Word, labor in the altar, labor in prayer, and minister daily, Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread, then I, die, I doubt if you'll ever reach the blessing God wants you to reach. You must press for the blessing. Now, I want you to understand this. Here, this guy, Jacob, he's done got this angel. I mean, he's hooked onto him, grabbed him by the waist, and the man's trying to beat the boy off. He said, would you please get me, leave me alone? And Jacob said, you ain't going nowhere until you put the blessing on me. So that angel reached back, evidently got a little bit in the flesh, and he knocked that old Jacob in the leg. I mean, his thigh shrunk, went, oh, good God. But boy, he still had one good arm. He's still hanging on to the boy. I mean, he got beat, he got punched. You have been punched by God? I guarantee your meat will shrink up, praise God. And I mean, his thigh just shrunk up, and he said, you ain't going nowhere. This is after he's wounded. Most people, you get punched, you turn them loose, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you get knocked in the face, you say, okay. i never forget that when I was a kid, I, I was fighting this big guy. Now, don't, these kids, don't take this, uh, in other words, don't go out there and fight people. But this is before I was saved. This big ball was beating my brains out, knocking me out. And I figured after the first lick, I had enough sense to say, I quit. So I said, I quit. So he got up and turned around, and I knocked his brains out when he did. <laughs> now, that was a dumb boy. <laughs> don't never turn your back on the devil. He'll kick you. But when I came to the knowledge of Jesus, I realized that I had to persevere to the fullest extent that God said I could. I had to reach out to the Lord and minister life to him daily, whether I felt like it or not. I had to get in service and praise God when I didn't feel like it. I had to give offerings when I didn't want to. Bless God. God would say, do this. I'd look in my wallet and I had an abundance of lack. It wasn't much in there at all, you know. Space and air, praise God. And God said, give and it shall be given. How about put the shall be given for and then I'll do the give. <laughs> but before I could be blessed, I had to press for the blessing. And here Jacob is fighting with God, boy. And he said, you ain't going nowhere until you bless me. Now Jesus had come and let us reason together. I have walked in the back of my patio at time, and I said, God, I want to tell you something. You called me into this ministry. I believe without a shadow of a doubt that your word will not return for it. But I got to talk to you about, about some things. I'm not going out there and just preach the gospel like anybody else. I can preach 51 revivals a year. I'm booked right now, bless God, to 1986. I got 150 revivals on my desk. If I book that, I go to 88 or 89. I got more revivals than I can ever do. I made up my mind, God, I just don't want to go from church to church just preaching a revival here, preaching a revival there. What I want to do is press for the blessing. I am not turning you loose until I see what you want me to do in the fullness of everything you asked me that I could do. And he said, what do you want? I said, well, good God, I want it all. He said, Jesse, you greedy. I said, I can't help but the same spirit that you's in me. Amen. You sent your son. You want the world too. Amen. I said, well, good God, if you're using me as a representative, then bless God, I got to have the same, uh, same diligence you have, God, and you ain't gave up yet yourself. <laughs> See, perseverance is the key. That's why God said, I'm going to send my son. He's going to die for all mankind. What blow the devil's socks off, he didn't know who he was. See, many people thought the devil knew who Jesus was, but he said, if thou be the son of God. What he, what he was looking for, he was looking up for somebody that was born of natural phenomena. But Jesus wasn't born of natural phenomena. He was born of woman's seed. God said that in the book of Genesis. You'll be born of woman's seed. Yeah, that sounds good, but wait a minute. Women ain't got seed. Men have seed. Women don't have seed. The devil said that don't make no sense. You ever confuse the devil? But God realized, brother, that if he would persevere through the personage of Jesus Christ, and if Jesus would walk like God walked, because the only way he was so successful, the reason he was so successful, he never did nothing of himself. Notice they said, uh, I only do what my father tells me to do. It's my father in me that doeth the work. Now notice this. He persevered to the cross. He was right there by the cross. He said, Father, this cup can pass for me, but nevertheless not my will but thine be done. He persevered to the cross so I could come to the knowledge of his Father. He pressed for the blessing. The cross was the greatest blessing mankind would ever know, and yet it sure didn't look like it. He was a man that could heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, and couldn't help himself. 
There he is hanging on a cross. Everybody wants a Barabbas instead of Jesus. The world says, give me Barabbas. Barabbas will kill you. Jesus will give you life. Pressing for the blessing. See, sometimes some people think, okay, God bless me. Well, I ain't got it yet, but go ahead and do it anyway. You got to press for the blessing. You got to press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You got to reach out. There's sometimes God says, get up at three o'clock in the morning. God likes to talk to me. Now, I said, God, it is three o'clock in the morning. He said, I know I created the time. I said, well, my good sex, don't you know I don't get up till seven? I said, why three o'clock? He said, you can't talk to nobody because everybody's asleep. He said, you love to talk, Jesse? I got to catch you when nobody's around. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. He said, I said, it's three o'clock. Get up. I said, what do you want to talk? He said, I just want to love you. I said, go ahead and love me while I'm sleeping. <laughs> Praise God. I'll love you in the morning. Oh, Jesus said, persevere. So he begins to call upon my spirit man inside of me. He says, begin to intercede. Begin to minister life. Begin to press for the blessing. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do in the next few weeks. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do through you in the next year. Listen to what I'm saying. Boy, and I begin to get these things. Boy, I begin to get, I shout sometime in my own room. I preach to myself. I give an offering to myself. I bought my own tapes. My God, that's how much I like it. I have. I said, bless God, this is good. I wish somebody would know. I wish somebody could hear me. And my wife was sleeping. She didn't want to hear it. And Jody was sleeping. She didn't want to hear it. But the dog was awake. Praise God. Thank God for the dog. So I put the word of God on the dog. And all he did was say, mm-hmm. Whatever you say, man, anything you say. I got him convicted once I saw his leg go, his tail go between his legs. I said, I got him to the altar, God. It's close. Good Lord. He didn't know what to do. Perseverance is the key to receive all the thing God has for you through prayer. When you press for the blessing, brother, when you hang on to God's promises, God, you said my husband is, you got, I got the promise of my family, whether the devil likes it or not, that bird is just as tough like he married me. He's in my family. You hanging on to that blessing, and the devil's trying to kick the blessing out your hand, but you're pressing for it. You keep knocking on the door. You ever had somebody always knocking on your door? You ever had a kid come up to you and grab your head and say, hey, Ma, 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 I'll talk to you in a minute. Ma. Ma, ma, you ever get three or four of them? Ma, ma, they're just jerking all over you. See, they are persevering. They're pressing for the blessing. How many times you told your kids, bro, Scott, you can't have no candy? They said, oh, rip, man, rip. But about 35 seconds later, hey, ma, how about I miss the good ball? What do you think, huh? And they just keep pressing, pushing, pushing, pushing. Push it, push it, till you say, ah, here's the whole box. Then they go outside and say, told you I could change her mind. <laughs> Them kids ain't stupid. They know what's going on. See, they're persevering. They're pressing for the blessing. <laughs> you see, God is the El Shaddai. Jody calls me the El Shaddad. <laughs> I provide everything for her. See, just come on. Oh, you know how kids are. Oh, daddy. You know, everything is a crisis when you're 13. <laughs> Why? Because I've been 13 myself, or 12 and a half. I've been, I've been that age myself. But when I persevere to the Lord, when the devil tries to chuck everything out of my hands, brother, and I'm standing on the promise of God, and the devil says, you will not receive nothing, I hang on to God. And God says, hang on, Jesse. I said, I ain't going nowhere till you bless me. I'll not move until you bless me. And you know, sometimes God will drag you through all kinds of stuff. He'll just say, hang on. I'll never forget my mama. She used to tell me when I was little. She said, hang on to me, boy. We'd walk through a shopping center. Sometimes i fall down just hanging on to her dress. she just drag me up. She didn't care. <laughs> hang on. They got some. You ever seen some people? They got dog leashes on their kids. You ever notice that? They go down there, Marty, 14 dog leashes. All right, let's go. Bless God. You're just walking down there. See them kids, man? Just keep jerking them. They ain't going nowhere. Perseverance. Perseverance is the key to receive everything God has for you in this life. 
You need to press for that blessing and minister life to Jesus in the fullness that Jesus said you could have. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 11. Turn with me to it. Say, where's First Chronicles? Right before Second Chronicles. First Chronicles chapter 16. Read it with me. Listen to the point. Perseverance is the key to receive all the things God has for you through prayer. First Chronicles 16, verse 11. The Bible said, seek the Lord and his strength, not your strength. It said, seek the Lord. How many people believe that word? Amen. Seek the, First Chronicles 16, verse 11. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. In other words, all the time, constantly seek the Lord and his strength. What is his strength? The joy of the Lord. When you get joy in your life, that's God, that's the strength of God. When you got the happiness, which is an emotional feeling, boy, you got joy and happiness, you are a dangerous individual because you're liable to explode anywhere. You ever exploded all over somebody? Thanks for listening to this powerful message by Jesse Duplantis. Remember to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell in order to be up to date with all things Jesse Duplantis Ministries. For more information, visit our website at jdm.org. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.